The objective here is to explain what the Intel manual says about SSE2 instructions. The way we're going to approach this will be a little different than last time when I went over the SSE, well we could call it one, but there's never, I never see a one. But the first time Intel came out with SSE instructions, looks like that was in 1999 compared to uh, SSE2 came out in 2001. Well, when I went over that first set, I went ahead and read quite a bit of the assembly. So like I was saying, instead of reading the assembly to you in this section, 5.6, page 127, I'm going to just read the first few paragraphs of every section and then just leave the um, instructions alone. And I feel fine doing that because those instructions really mirror the first SSE set. So without further ado, here we go. These extensions represent an extension of the SIMD instruction or execution, sorry, model introduced with the MMX technology and the SSE extensions. Remember, we're looking at about a two year difference here. SSE2 instructions operate on packed double precision floating point operands. Do you see that? Double precision, so that's a big difference. Maybe think two for double. But these instructions will also work on byte, word, double word, and quad word operands. And for us, if you're watching in order, the quad word is a new thing, at least regarding SSE. So to add to the newness, this is being done in the XMM registers. And we'll eventually get to chapter 11 where we'll read more about that. So your first question is what's the difference with the SSE2 instructions compared to SSE? I almost said one again. Maybe they should have gone with an SSE 0, then a 1, then a 2. Well, the manual says SSE 2 instructions can be executed on 64 and 32 processors that support the extensions. There's a whole way you can see if that processor you're working on supports it using CPU ID. Now, these instructions are divided into four subgroups, just like we've seen before. So, we're going to see a bunch of packed and scalar stuff. Down here is a new looking thing, the 128-bit SIMD integer instructions. And at the end here, it's a cacheability control and instruction ordering instructions. And if it's anything like last time, that, that is just about uh, moving these values into main memory. So here's a question for you. How many bits are in that SIMD integer instruction? Answer is 128. So down here on section 561, this is the exact same pattern we saw before with packed and scalar stuff, except the double precision is right here. If we scroll down, we're going to see that almost all of these instructions are just like before, except we're talking double precision now, and we're talking the XMM registers. So we'll quickly scroll past that. Uh, here's that arithmetic part. So we're talking add, subtract, multiply, divide, and then there's less compute instructions over here but the same number of maximum and minimum instructions. The logical ones are the same. We got our AND, AND NOT, OR, and XOR. In order to compare, same stuff. Down here, there's an instruction. So after we order or perform an ordered comparison of scalar double precision, we can set flags in E flags register. After that, we're in the shuffle and unpack area. Remember this was the high value part and then a low value part? Well, the D stands for double. You see up here, it's just so easy to tell the difference between SSE and SSE2 instructions because uh, two is all about doubles, one or zero or just SSE is all about singles. All right, we're down here at the conversion part, and this is pretty intense. Let me read the paragraph. SSE2 conversion instructions convert packed and individual double word integers into packed and scalar double precision floating point values and vice versa. I find it interesting that it's not quad word integers, but whatever. It says they also convert between packed and scalar single precision and double precision floating point values. So you could go from a single to a double and that is the big addition over here in that conversion section. So we got convert, scalar, double, two, maybe for uh, the double word integer you can read over here. And then S for scalar, maybe it shouldn't be scalar, that was the other S. So S for something and then I. It is fun to try to uh, decompress these uh, mnemonics. 
All right, so it looks like they added three very specific instructions for um, working with single precision floating points while being in this um, SSE2 extension. Next, we have SSE2 120-bit SIMD integer instructions. Uh oh, I'm going too fast. We have not asked a question lately, so let's go with. Sorry about this. Pick an instruction to decode yourself like I have been trying to. And for a second question, let's just be very clear. How many bits are in a double precision value? All right, so back to this 128-bit SIMD instruction. Um, there's a bunch of move things. So you can move aligned a double quad word. Same with an unaligned one. Here's some MMX to XMM register stuff. And back again. Like the title says, integer. So the next one, here's more integer stuff. You're multiplying unsigned double words in this case. Oh, now that makes sense. So a double quad word is obviously 128 bits. All right, so we got the add, subtract, the shuffle, the shift, um, unpack. There were some pretty nice pictures over here I found for packing. See, packing and unpacking. Well, when it comes to cacheability, uh, cacheability control instructions provide additional operations for caching of non-temporal data when storing data from XMM registers to memory. We read about L fence before, but now there's an M fence. And we've covered a CLF flush before, and Intel just reminds us to see that section. As a reminder, LFENCE serializes load operations, while MFENCE serializes load and store operations. Pause is an easy one to remember. This will improve the performance of spin weight loops. So that must have been a big enough thing for Intel to create an instruction solely for it. So what does the assembly instruction pause do? All right, next we got two non-temporal things, well, four non-temporal things. And these are all about moving things from registers into memory. So that's it. We got ourselves five good questions. Uh, next time we'll go over the SSE3 instructions. And if you want access to all the questions I've created so far for the Intel manual, specifically the 64 IA32 architecture software developer manual, um, you can go to my GitHub here. So github.com backslash rhoten backslash Sorry, these are forward slashes, so a uh, forward slash Intel manual. And you can see I have a tiny bit of code I've uh, placed here as well. If the Intel manual mentions something relating to code, I try my best to put it in here. And you all can feel free to contribute to this as well.